Well, it's got my price on it. It's a decent John Deere. The standard trans, flat in the front. Looks like it's probably just been sitting out in the weather forever. It's like mouse nests are all in it. A snake lived in it. it. Turns. What do you think? It's a candidate to resurrect, possibly. You got the key. I don't have my truck with me right now. Let me go uh, see if I can go push it out back, and I'll come back and get it. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. This is uh, part two of this John Deere 160 that somebody put out to the curb. Last video, we got the engine running, went through the carb, uh, less good issues, made sure we were able to get it to turn with the key, which we did, and that was about it. So we're gonna continue carrying that torch forward. Between the last video and this one, one thing I did when you guys weren't around, was it, took it out, pressure washed it about a day or so ago, got all the mouse crap and all the other debris out of it, give us a little bit easier machine to work on. That and the rear tin was off. I took that, sanded that, and painted that so that when we were reassembling it, we're not getting our fingerprints all over tacky wet paint kind of thing. We got more stuff to figure out what's going on with it. Let's get the ball rolling, start wrenching. So a couple of things I like to look into, one being the rear end, make sure that it has all the gears in the rear differential. And also we can start looking into the mower deck and see what kind of shape the mower deck itself is in. Maybe we'll jump on those two items make sure that we're not dealing with a money pit and having to go spend a ton of money on it if so we'll change our plans on the direction we go with it if not we'll keep moving forward with uh, bringing it back to life i see we jack the rear end up off the ground and we should be able to kind of run it through the gears and at least make sure that it's locked up. What are you? Now it's an open differential, so one tire is gonna spin the opposite direction. But we should, I'm not sure what gear we're in. So they both turn. I would call that neutral, hopefully. <laughs> that should be a reverse. It's in gear. So, first, neutral. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's got four or five. Well, whatever it is, it seems like it has all the gears. I'm happy with that. Let's go take a quick peek at the mower deck and see what's going on with the condition of that. It's got a nice thick set of blades on it. See a bunch of white corrosion though, that might be. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. <laughs> uh, got a grease fitting, but I have a feeling the corrosion is probably between the little housing and the uh, steel, the aluminum and the steel. We get a beater of some sort, give her a couple wax if we can free it up. Actually, we might be better off just pulling the whole deck right off of there. So we've got a pin here. I'm sure the same on the other side. And what is this? What is this doing? Is that doing anything? I don't see anything. The one, two. It's gotta be more than two points. Oh, the two points out front. Those two out front. Let me get them off, get that deck, deck. <laughs> yeah. The deck dropped down and get it out of our way. It'd be a little easier to work on flipped over. out of there. And 
It's been rusted in place for a while. Yeah, I want to say this thing's probably been sitting 10, 15 years. Now we just gotta get it out of there. Let's just see if we can elevate the whole thing. Slide out the back. Those two arms in the front, I can't pull over the mower deck. So. Been there a while. Other thing, we should, expensive item that we should check is the condition of that electric PTO. Make sure that still works. Let's see any movement out of them. I see a rust hole in the deck. Up in here, you'll see it in a minute. See the crap actually coming out of the bottom of it. Yeah, so the, so the bearings may be okay, but the uh, just the corrosion on the aluminum. Plus, I'm sure if we flip it over, the belt wherever it was sitting on the pulleys probably has a bunch of rust underneath it too. We get her flipped over. Let's get that tilted up. So we can get to the. at one time. We'll lift you guys up a little bit higher too. There you go. I'm sure that stick is not helping things any. Yeah. <laughs> Probably just take that right off maybe. One of them pulleys is not liking it. <laughs> I would say, I just broke the belt loose on that one. So that's our tensioner. And that usually has a lever, which is already in the loose position. You can't, it's over here on the right hand side. There's a lever that you flip. Let's see if you can get that belt off of there. I can get a feeling for what's what. That one's good. That one has issues. I think that one will free up. A little bit of lube. Let's see what we got going on over here. Feels good too. A little growly. But it's just spin free. So this will be the one that's an issue. I believe we had a bad, we're going to have a bad bearing in there. I don't think that one's going to come back. But good enough. We'll leave that be for now. I'm more concerned about the tractor, but it's nice to know what we have to work with. Here's that hole I was talking about. Looks like it took a blowout in the side of the deck too. Let me weld a patch on that. The rest of it looks pretty solid though. I don't see any issues. You? It's probably on the ground. Yeah, I've got some play in it. Not terrible. Alright, back to the tractor. Let's go peek underneath. See if anything looks a foul. I think the rear is filled with grease. I don't think it's a 
gear oil type. Is there a drain plug on it? No. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. If you have a brake shoe on the side that goes in, I'm sure that's going to be all seized up, which is right there. So when you hit the brakes, it pivots that lever, and it's a little set of brake shoes underneath here that go on that rotor, and it stops the transmission from spinning. I'm sure that's going to need some love. Let's go. I got a couple idlers. Go. That one feels okay. That one feels okay. Let's go put power to it. I went and did a little shopping at home stash for a PTO switch. Let's go hook. See if we can hook that up and see if that PTO will fire. That's a, a tad pricey item. I do need an electric PTO switch. And back in my stash here, hopefully. Let's see if that has the wiring yet. It's hard to tell. Need a seat too. I don't know if there are gonna be any. That one might be halfway decent. That one doesn't have a PTO switch. No, this is our only hope is gonna be this one. I took and trimmed the wires back on that switch. Let's get our ohmmeter working correct. And we're gonna to try to probe circuits and see if it's even gonna be usable. It might not be similar enough to, to work, but we'll see. Be around volts, that's why. Ohms. So when those numbers go to zero, means that you have a path and when it says ol open loop or open circuit or so we are going to try to find first the one for the ignition switch and if you didn't watch the first video it may not make sense but i uh, what's on there now is it seems like power comes in on yellow and then we got to figure out where it goes out so it should be a path now I guess it's going to be that one. If we open it, it should open. That'll make it so you can't start it. It's a weird number. Let's try it again. The high resistance set in K, what does it say? M, yeah, meg. So it's a, that's a number that's way open. All right, so we're going to go with yellow and purple for now are the ones for ignition. I don't know what works. Let's go just check some other stuff and see what we get. We'll leave that same power wire up to what does what. That's Meg also. Meg is a million. It's a uh, very close to infinity. Let's go. Let's try to be a little bit methodical. Okay, button in, off yellow. Let's see if any of them make contact. All right, we know that one does, and this one should be the same. Yep, they both go to the same place. All right, what about this one? That's Meg, that's open. And that's open. Let's go open it. Still open, still Meg. Yep. Open. All right, let's go switch to just the path of these two. So that's a closed path, open path. I have a feeling it's two separate switches just built into each other. Whether they jump across each other, I don't know. But it seems like this is going to continue a path. This one will be for our ignition. So it'll crank when the button's in. 
that path is completed, buttons out, this path is completed. So this one should be for the electric PTO. Let's just put some jumpers on it temporarily, kind of put it on, put it on there, put it on there and make sure that holds true. I look down underneath on the PTO switch and it has, I'm looking for a jumper. It has a two blacks and a blue. I would think the blacks are ground and the blue needs power going down to it. And we do have a blue up here. So I have a feeling that we should be in the crank anyway. Yeah. All right. So we have power going across these. And the last power to go to, sorry, you turn the key off, it's off. Power's on. I have a feeling if we jump that power also to that blue wire, maybe it'll click that relay. Let's go, that relay, the, uh, there we go. So you can hear the PTO pulling in and out. So that's how it functions. This is probably a safety for something else. Probably, I don't know, maybe a kill. If the mower, that's probably what it is. If the mower deck is on and you maybe you should get off the seat. I don't know, but the, it's along those lines. So that's kind of out of the picture, at least for now. And that's probably what this yellow lead is for. So the switch will have one circuit, which is this for crank, that it won't crank when it's off. And this circuit, we can go yellow, blue. We'll make the other one work. Let's go hook those up real quick and make sure that's correct. We actually got to cut a hole in the dash, I think, to get that to pop down into there. Sometimes you can, most of the time, you can probe the back of these and there's a little tab that locks in. If you get it in the right spot, you can pull the wire connector out of it. I'm not sure what side it's on. Like a little metal diving board that, there it goes. A little metal diving board on the back side of it that locks it in there. So I'm gonna do the same to those three. And we'll plug them right in. Make sure they don't touch together right now. <laughs> we got yellow and red. Now that should crank, pull it out, should not. Good. And then we got for the PTO, we are also going to have yellow. Which way did it go? So it will be the bottom two wires will be that circuit. Let's go put. enough room that's a endure a little bit of bending and that one should go and then I bet you the other side of that switch is the opposite we might even be able to use that for the other circuit yet okay so that should be all the way out here to PTO click on yep good Crank, PTO comes on, no crank. Awesome. Let's go move on to something else. Let's go check on that battery. The volts DC. I left it charge overnight. Ten volts. Got a dead cell. Yeah, it took a charge, but one of the cells did not come back. Yeah, it's a, what happens if they go totally dead like that, the water, I think the water and the acid separate with no charge, and then the water can freeze and it flexes the plates and cracks them. So, oh, well. Need a battery. Let's go see what's in that gas tank. Or, I, I doubt gas, but it's got a good... One or two quarts of something in it. I'm not sure if it's gas or water. We're going to find out right now. <laughs> well, 
It smells kind of rancid. Get back to the electrical. People were commenting on, why don't you just Google it and look it up and see what the wires and stuff do. I'm trying to show how to figure stuff out if you don't have that capacity. Last resort, yeah, I'll do that. But I, I kind of like to understand how things are working by troubleshooting and, and you know, maybe it's something I could pass on as far as like the, the thought process behind it. So I know a lot of people seem to get irritated at the fact that I just don't look it up and see what wire does what. Well, that's, that's why. You see when that it drips out, it goes clear for a second. That's all the water that's on the bottom. I think it's an eighth inch of old gas and an inch of fuel. So I'm gonna do my best to dry that out of there. Get the rest of it out. We gotta look and make sure that the fuel valve and everything still works in it. And then there's a float over here. Should click. Yeah, that's a, a fuel level. Watch. So it goes clear for a second. That's the water underneath it. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it was 90% water. I'm trying to see what it's got for an, an input on the other side. And I can feel a metal pickup tube that goes all the way down to, goes all the way down to that lowest part of the tank down in here. So I'm not gonna be too concerned about that, but I do wanna cut this off and I don't know if I wanna work with the fuel shut off on and off. Maybe we'll just leave all the way out and <laughs> hopefully it doesn't leak or suck air. We'll find out. If we have an issue later on with it running, maybe we'll get into that. But sometimes you mess with these things and if you don't have anything to fix it with, it could be digging a hole. Let's throw the fuel line off of there. I don't want to distort it, so I'm going to cut on an angle away to try to minimize the amount of torque I'm putting on the fitting itself. Not so bad with metal ones, with plastic ones, you really got to be be cautious. So sometimes the best way to go. Right. Let's go put a piece. We'll see if that valve works. Blow back through it. Ow! You knew I was gonna do that, didn't you? Let's go with a piece of this. A little more flexible than that stuff. There we go. Gonna blow on the end of it. actually works. I still don't know if we're going to get any leaking coming out of there. We could probably give a little squit squit with some soapy water. Let's yeah, see if that's the same. Good. I'm going to place all that fuel line too. This one has a, looks like a little bit of a heat shield on it. But we're not gonna have that with the new one. Cause I don't have that for the new one. A little powdery there, huh? The fuel pump, it's a, I'm gonna call it a pulse pump. And basically what they do they take a signal from the crankcase. See this hose going down to the bottom of the crank. As the piston goes up and down, it makes on the other side of the piston, you know, you get the top side where the compression and the fire happens. Well, on the other side of that, the pressure varies, makes a pulse. Not very much, but it's a bit of a pulse. And that pulse is enough to move a diaphragm 
on one side of the pump, makes the pump move, little check valves on the inside of it, allows the diaphragm to fire, it's actually this side, and then on the other side of the diaphragm is where the fuel is with two check valves, so every time the, the pulse goes one direction, draws fuel in, and then it goes the other direction, the valve shuts, and then the valve opens, allowing it to go out of here. And vice versa, when it goes the other direction, there's a valve on this side that shuts, that doesn't allow the fuel to get sucked back through. So that's what's happening inside those, how they operate. But we are going to place that whole assembly of fuel line and fuel filter all the way up to it and out of the other side. The pulse part I'll leave alone because there's no fuel there. That doesn't generally deteriorate like the rest of the fuel line from the, the uh, ethanol that's in the fuel. Let's go wiggle that out of there. A little mental note of where it was routed. Over under, under over. Bet you that's gonna come out. Straight water. <laughs> Get a little extra. Drop the tank back in it. Let's go put some fuel in and we'll crank it over. Before we put the fuel line back on the carburetor, we'll let it kind of push through the, the fuel pump just in case there's any water in there. I blew it out, but I'd rather let it purge itself. I'm just gonna call that good for now. Set you up out front and give her some cranks. See if that gets some fuel through. You'll be able to see in the fuel filter on its way, you know. We got, nope, I got something. Probably the neutral safety switch. Yep, there we go. Here it comes. It's looking a little murky. That's pushing some water through it did. Probably, maybe I'll dump that out and I'll, I'll do it again until I get clear. I just don't want to push crap back into the gas tank, you know? Yeah, you can see, literally see, hold on. You can literally see water sitting on the bottom. That's why we did it. Right, I'll do that again until it comes clear. Let's try it again. Uh-oh. <laughs> I have a feeling one of the diaphragms in a carburetor uh, in the fuel pump got uh, sunk. I don't think it's the level of the fuel. Gosh. Sometimes, this is going to taste gross. Just give it a little shot of air back and you can kind of seat the one of those two diaphragms. They're not doing what they're supposed to. So I'm I shouldn't have been able to blow back into the tank like that. Again, that valve should have shut, so. Do you hate when that happens? 
Yeah. I'm gonna try uh, shooting air from the other side, try to get the diaphragms to seat, and I'll bring you back when I get it squared away. Try to draw it through with the turkey baser. See if you can see the fuel filter. See if that seated it. Might have. I'm gonna put a little bit of fuel in it. Get some RPMs going. See if that'll do it for us. that gas settle out take a peek at it still looks a little cloudy to me though Literally see at the very bottom there that discolored puddle that's the water dirt dirt might have just got knocked off the engine when it was uh, running I think we got it now we can hook that fuel line up and just run it That's more like it. Now, I'll prime it, I'll prime it anyway, just so it pushes its way through. Now it should stay running once the fuel goes up. up is choke out. I don't want to kind of I'm going to choke it with my fingers here. Hold on. That's a choke. All right. I still want it to rev real high because I don't have the cover on it. Change the oil, I think, is the next thing on the list. Let's see what that looks like when it comes out. I went and grabbed another gas cap. Fortunately, they're not the same size, so I'll have to keep an eye out for one of those. Sorry about the background noise. That's the exhaust fan. That's what we get. 
Yeah, that's pretty dirty. While it's busy doing this thing, I'm gonna take a few minutes to start buttoning up the fan shroud. Up in my stash, I'm gonna try to find a, an oil filter for that. I don't know. If not, we'll go without it and just kind of. That actually might be in it. Might be in it. Might be the one we're looking for. Sometimes it pays to be a hoarder. Nope. These are all stuff that other people had, not my personal. I guess you never have to buy a Tundra filter again, too. Kawasaki, that's a good sign. Maybe. Looks like the right flavor. Yeah, look at that. That wants a six point socket. The weird setup, huh? Let's see if a pair of water pumps spin that out of there. It's a newly acquired one. Where'd that end up? What'd you do with it? Where'd you put it? Come on, man. There it is. Looks a tad shorter. Let's see what that ID, though. This one's got a bigger hole. If not, we'll rinse that one out. The old one. Get one when the getting's good. Got the crap off of there. There's a load of crap on the, on the flange area of it. The Q. You guys are flashing. You're flashing me. So you guys have no, no morals. I got to change your battery. Be right back. Hmm. I don't know. I question it. Plus you're not catching very many threads because I think one's sitting a little Yeah, the threads on this one are more proud than this one. I'm gonna take one last look up inside that thing. I have a feeling we're gonna rinse this one out. I'll try to find the part number off of it. And uh, we could just swap that when it comes in. Yeah, the threads were wrong on that one. This one has the right threads. Yuck. The seal's a little bit larger diameter, but I see a large sealing area on there. If that'll go on there, Yeah, it butts right up good on that. And then 
put a note on it to get to get the right one. Didn't want to push old dirt through though, you know. Sometimes you gotta work with what you got. It starts knocking later on, we know why. <laughs> the check valve's the other way. Oil filters have a, a valve in them that allows you to draw through but not push back so that they don't lose their oil prime. At some point, somebody had their way with a pry bar on the cover. Had their way with it. Let's see if we can. a little better. Let's fire it up and see if she does everything she should. Yes, the oil's in it. Uh, what do I need to do? We might need some choke. All right. I wanted to let it build oil pressure before I gave her, you know. <laughs> you got off the motor, didn't you? Drive train. See if you can fire that PTO. Trying to find when it's gonna die. I'm running it in. I like it right about there. Idle speed, that's be too low. Yeah, right about there. oil level on that everything's working I don't see anything leaking out and then go air out the place and I got to go probably gonna whittle the hole for that because it's a round hole square peg round hole
It's gonna start tearing into the brakes, but I figure why don't we even just see, maybe they work. <laughs> Rear's up, actually we gotta get it, so. So you can see that spinning. Let's go. I need to lock that pedal down. that down vice grips and then be able to turn the wheel in the back. I got vice grips on it now. Let's see if because it'll do this all day long because it's just an open div. They work. I don't know how great they work. Generally one of the pads sees up, but why I'm a, a little cautious with screwing with it is, again, you got steel going into aluminum. These have a, a tendency to break off, and if it is, it's just a big pain in the ass. So, it, so it's functioning, I really don't want to screw with it. And this is your brake adjustment on the outside. There's a jam nut right here. I don't know if you can see it. That jam nut pushes the inner pad in a little further. Well, if the wheel come off, we'll dig a little further. How's that? Got a snap ring. Get in the hole. Am I too big for the hole? Tight. Oh. Gotta call in a smaller pair. That way we can kind of film too, you know? Kind of hard to see around the tire what I'm doing. You gonna come off? Oh, look at that. It's even gooey on the backside. Not all rust. All right, so now we can see the setup. Let me get set up to work on the setup. Yeah, so it's got a lever that's a cam. This is the lever got a cam on the end of it and there's two pins that push in and then there's a floating brake pad on the other side and then the rotor is supposed to float to catch the pad that's fixed on the inside hopefully it'll come apart and it'll make more sense not what that rush it is like part of the casting is busted away and I need a little hammer all right let's, let's go get some juice in it first the center one really shouldn't need it it doesn't like I said this one's the adjustment it feathers how much this lever is pushed in and pushes those pins. So as the pads wear, you crank that in a little bit more. Within reason. <laughs> you know, metal on metal. At some point you gotta change it. So let's see if we can get this one. Put heat on it neither. Generally, you try to get a little bit of room, and over time, you rock it back and forth, you're, you're kind of making a little bit of a path or space. But really, what happens with these is it's probably more right here. The hole that it goes through just corrodes up and it hangs up 
you know, the steel and the aluminum puff out for lack of better terms. I'm going to do a bunch of this <laughs> in private. Some things you just want to be left to you alone. And hopefully, and it's going. Once you get like one full rotation, usually. And I'll get you there. What also helps is sometimes you get one side out, then you can rotate the body of the thing a little. How many of me? How many of you are yelling at me to get a ratchet? I don't know. Ready the whole way. Back down more towards the end. Yeah, they're stuck. Here's your pad. But those pins are supposed to float. And they are pretty much locked up. And then this rotor should float on there. And that's seized up to it. And I don't think that is going to want to play well. We'll try. I'll go and tap it in. I don't want, I want to be careful with trying to grab it with a puller because you're pulling it against something that's not meant really to have a side load on it. I mean, you can give it a little bit. It's also, you can get around it. Yeah, there's not much room down here at all. There's no space to grab on the... <sighs> Figure something out. Let's go work with this part first, get it freed up. And tap them down. Come on. It should push the pad out on the other side. which broke free from its base. Actually, it might be okay. Finish tapping that last one. Huh? Yep. 
Right. How's that? I'm going to go clean this stuff up, clean these pins up on the wire wheel so that they float again. Let's see if we can get that out of there. We'll try a little air hammer in the center. And a little pry bar on the outside. What do you think? Piston's not stuck. I want. Where is it? I want fat and stubby. Don't judge.
See if we can finish. I think that's the last of the drivetrain stuff, isn't it? Now we got a tire up front that's got issues. Anyway. They're pushing the key out. clean up too.
I got the left tire down on the ground. So this one will spin, we can hit the brakes. Should do this pretty good yet. Yeah. Other side still slipping a little. That might be an issue. Might cause a slight lumpiness to the ride. Let's go see if we can figure out where it's leaking from. I don't see a terrible amount of dry rot on it, so that's good. Hopefully it's right on the bead. Let's give her a little bath. We need mist. There you Bead, it's leaking on the bead. A quick look, see if it's gonna blow bubbles anywhere else. There, kind of all the way around. Probably the same on the inside. Yeah, a little on the inside. So we're gonna go take the tire off and see if we get the bead to break. We'll clean up the surface that's on there and a little bead seal on it. Hopefully, it'll stay good. Won't grow be growing a white beard. That'd be really that dirty in there. I'm gonna take clean up that lip as best as possible. I don't feel any rust. Mm. It's not that bad. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta seal it that will work on that. Should work on that. I was gonna try if the, the pores were leaking on the tire. Guys are saying they put motor oil inside instead of like the stop leak stuff. And the oil closes up the pores and makes the rubber kind of swell up when it's all that dry cracky stuff. I'd like to give that a shot and we'll see if it works. We'll get some sealer. Goober it up and air it back up again. Just what it says. 
what it does. Kind of like a rubber cement, actually. And you just take that, and you go and you make a mess all the way around. And its job is where the little slight imperfections are, it just kind of fills them in. Put it on the rim too, it's not going to hurt. I'm going to do that to both sides, and I'll bring it back. I'm going to let that set up a little bit before I put air in it. I could wipe off some of that. dries up. I think that's a sip for about 10 minutes. I'll well, throw some grease in the front while we're waiting and the wheels off. This hasn't been done in forever. I like to see it was out the top. Rock it back and forth and get it to. Maybe we try to pull lock the other way. Probably do the same thing though. A little more restrictive. Yeah. You. Thundering out. That's the end of the, the steering column. It's like a spring-loaded preload, which got a lot of drag to it. I'll just let it soak with that. Yeah, it's been a little bit. Grease all the pivot points. I'm gonna give it a little more. You only read like five between five and ten, but I want to go a little bit more than that so it, it seats up into the rim. Let's see what we get now. Foul stem. Sometimes you could take, sometimes you take your tool and play with it a little bit. <laughs> it'll, it'll seat itself. If not, we just change that out. I need a new valve stem. You kidding me? You're a fighter, aren't you? Just have a defect inside the. the there's a, a seal. It's like a taper. On that that stem has a taper on it that fits up against the valve uh, seat. The stem that has a like an opposing surface like a valve it is a valve <laughs> let's go see if that 
Yeah, it's got it. So it looks fine. I think we're okay. Just give it another second. Yeah, we're fine. Slap that tire back on. Slippery, I can't find the hole. Get it? Got one of them. Okay. The rain is coming. It was booming a little while ago. Now you gotta look your best. Oh, they got that goober crap on there. <laughs> WD can't clean up. Gotta look good when you're in cruise for chicks, you know. Yeah, right. And, ta da! Looks pretty good, huh? Now the rest of the tractors look like crap because they painted that. Let's go get that tape off of there. I feel like I'm in a door song. Riders on the storm. Well guys, it's late. I'm gonna cut it right here. And I don't know how long the video is, but I figure it's probably a decent length. Hopefully one more video will be done with this one, but it looks like it's coming along pretty good. We get most of the mechanicals all taken care of. The brakes are done, tires are done, suspension, lubed, engine tin, oil change, switch put in, gas tank done, fuel line. And anything else I forget? Brake shoes. Uh oh. <laughs> I see little bubbles coming out from the tread. We're gonna have to put oil in that tire after all. All right, guys, with that, thanks for hanging out with me. Hope you enjoyed just putzing around with some free, free and cheap junk. See if we can bring it back to life on the, on the cheap. Till then, I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully, pretty soon. Later. We gotta at least fire it up and put it through the gears, right?
Donc elle a 